Absolutely. I wanted to mention the bioavailability of proteins. So basically what that means is that if you eat something, not all the nutrients and the amino acids can get absorbed in the body functionally for use. Yeah. So yeah, let me just let, let me just illustrate that for your for your audience is that, you know, in in animal-based proteins, we don't have fiber. You know, the proteins are all available and they're all di- digestible. But in a plant, the proteins are there for the structure of the plant. They're not there for a human to eat them. They're there because of the plant needs them. And about 50% of those proteins in the plant are bound to fiber. We can't digest the fiber. So that means the proteins are not bioavailable to us. You know, they're part of the plant structure, uh, which is one of the, you know, one of my sort of pet things is that that's one of the beauties of ruminant animals like cattle is cattle can take those types of fibrous plant proteins and in their stomach, that ruminant stomach they have, they can digest all of that and capture all of those amino acids and all of that protein. So we really have no other food system quite like a, a ruminant animal, cattle, sheep, goats, that tra- that can basically transform 60 grams of really poor quality protein into 100 grams of high quality protein. There's no other system, food system we can replace that with. Okay, so you mentioned an average of one and a half grams, 1.5 grams of protein per pound of kilo, of, of body weight in kilograms. But I did put here as, as a gram amount, at least 100 grams a day, women and men at least, simple, right? And that's, and that's I think, really... I mean, most guys will get above that, but most women have a real struggle to get that. You know, I think you look like you're a fairly small person. Uh, Most women have a real struggle to get to 100 grams. And we found in our weight loss studies where we were doing uh, metabolic syndrome and weight loss, we found that women would lose all of the benefits of protein if they got much below 100. So there's kind of a a 90 to 100 gram threshold, if you really are looking to get the protein benefits, you've got to get above that number. Well, I eat 120 grams of protein a day, so... Which is about, which is about what I eat, actually. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. Okay. So we, we did a lot of research with obesity. So I always get the question of what body weight to use when you're picking your protein target. Uh, and my state, since most people don't really know what their ideal body weight should be, Uh, We simply ask people, well, what's the target weight you want to get to? What do you want to weigh? And so base your protein on that. So we we wanted to keep it simple. So, you know, if if you're 50 pounds overweight, then base it on the target, whatever body weight. So don't base it on the, 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 the overweight body weight, base it on the target body weight. So let's say that somebody is 200 pounds, they want to be 150 pounds. That means that they should have 150 grams of protein a day. At, at a gram per pound. So that is, that's 2.2 grams per kg. So that's a really high number. And, and you know, my colleague, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, uh, she actually recommends that in her practice. Uh, we've always done our research more around 1.6, so a little lower Uh, We know from a lot of research that you maximize your muscle protein synthesis, even for athletes, at about 1.8 grams per kg. So 2.2 is quite a bit above that. Is there reasons to go higher? Well, one of the reasons would be to reduce your carbohydrates. I'd rather eat protein than more carbs. So that's a reason to go higher. But Going from 1.8 grams per kg to 2.2 grams will have no effect on muscle. One of the things that I've been really arguing in the professional world lately is what does it mean to metabolize amino acids? So let's sort of back up a step. So you and I are both non-growing adults. We're not adding muscle mass. So what happens to your 120 grams of protein per day? Every, every gram of them have to be oxidized every day, and you get glucose at a rate of about 60% out of those amino acids. So if you're eating 120, you're going to get 70 grams of glucose out of that every day. So every, the equivalent of every amino acid you eat 
that day, if we're both in maintenance, has to be oxidized. So the concept that it spills over or becomes inefficient, those are all really totally misleading biochemistry that simply has no relevance. Do we become less efficient? Um, perhaps, but again, it's really a metabolic balance we're talking about, but they're all being oxidized. They're all turning into they're all turning into glucose. So if they're turning into glucose in the context of somebody having lower carbohydrates, by definition, that's maybe a hundred grams of carbs a day, then people, someone doing a keto diet, even someone doing a carnival diet. So in the context of that, having 120 grams of protein a day, and there's 70 grams of that converting to glucose, is that a bad thing or is that just a byproduct of what happens in the body? It's what the body intends to do. If you if you look at the National Academy of Sciences and you look at the carbohydrate requirement, they've stayed right up front. There's no dietary requirement for carbohydrates at all. But the body has a base need for around 80, 90 grams per day for your for your brain and your red blood cells, your nervous system, your kidney. Protein is part of that. Um, the unique thing about protein is that when you eat protein, the amino acids come into the body, they're actually metabolized very slowly. When you eat glucose, you have to get rid of it within two hours of eating it, or by definition, that's the definition of diabetes. So when you eat protein, it can take five, six, seven hours to metabolize it. So while you're converting the protein into glucose, or in some cases, fatty acids, uh, it's done incredibly slowly. And so what you'll find is a person who's on a higher protein, lower carbohydrate, they'll have a very stable fasting blood glucose all night long. They will wake up in the morning with a higher blood glucose than the person on a high carb diet because their body's making it totally consistently. And so what the difference is, is that the body has shifted away from a system where it relies on insulin to get rid of carbs all the time to where it's using protein to make it in a very steady, slow process. Totally different metabolism. 